I can stay. Right. And here I also stay. So this is even number of zeros. Okay? Including zero zeros. Including no zeros. And what about containing 101? Here's 1, 0, 1. This is the beginning. If I see a 1 and an 0 and a 1, then I stay there and, and I accept everything. But what if I get a 0 here? Stay. What if I get a 1 here? Yeah? Oh, I, need, I think I need to stay because I've already seen a 1. Right? We did, we did one of these last time, I think. And then here, 1, 0. If I get a 0, that's back to the beginning. So here's 1, 0, 1. Here's even. Now let's say I want to accept all strings whose first parts are made up of things that have even number of zeros, and second part is made up of things that contain 1, 0, 1. So I'm going to have the initial state start here, and I'm going to take an emu from the final state of this machine to the initial state of this machine. Okay. And now, this machine can churn through looking for an even number of zeros, and whenever it feels like, it can either keep looking and, and continue, or switch over and start looking for the second half of the string that contains a 1, 0, 1. This is a powerful choice, because it isn't obvious when to make this choice, but as long as it has the ability to make it anywhere it wants, it can always find the right place to do it. And there's never any way it's going to end up in this final state unless the first half that it made its point to make the decision to move, unless the first half had even number of zeros and the second half had a 1, 0, 1 in it. So we'll accept just the ones we want. There's always a way to accept the ones we want. And this e-move tells us when to do it. If we went ahead and converted this all to a deterministic machine, it would be deterministic and less obviously magical. All right? Does that make sense a little more? Seth, you thinking about something? Are you? No? All right. <laughs> Just looking thoughtful. It's just like a real simple notation from doing a million different things. Yeah, it's really cool, yeah. Uh, here. You guys know how to do intersection, and you know how to do union and complement, right? So remember this rule? Remember that from who knows when? What's that called? Anybody remember? De Morgan. Good. He's rolling in his grave with happiness. <laughs> yes, Doug remembers me. <laughs> right. That's De Morgan's law, and it, and it's a, it's a law about sets. You can make a picture of this and convince yourself. It's also a law about Boolean algebra. It it, it works with ands and ors and and nots. The key thing is, if you've got two machines, one for a and one for b. You can get a machine that does their intersection by doing this stuff. You can complement A and complement B. You guys know how to do that, right? Toggle the states. Then union them. You know how to do that? Do your two E transitions. Then complement the result again. You have to take your two E transitions, convert it to a deterministic machine before you complement it, because we only know how to complement deterministic machines. So there's a lot of work here, but at least in principle it can be done. So now it's closed under intersection. And you should always know that union, intersection, and complement, you can't have just two out of the three. If you have two out of the three, then the third one's also closed. OK, because intersection depends on the other two, and union depends on the other two. So, so either they all are, or just one of them is. And that's going to happen in the, in the uh, levels above finite state machines. Finite state machines, like I mentioned, are closed under most things. So here all three are. This is not the nicest way to do it, though. If I actually made you come up with the intersection using this method, it's a pain in the butt, right? You do the complement, take the union, convert it to a deterministic machine, complement it again. Anytime you have to move from non-determinism to determinism, there's an exponential potential. That's a pain. Nobody likes that. No good. So I'm going to show you a better way to do intersection, which is similar to what Dimitri did last time, this idea of the product of the two. And it's very natural. And we'll do it with. Uh, Maybe we'll do it with these two examples. Are there programs to do all this? Ooh, yeah, there's a link I just put up on the, uh, on the course site. Uh, there's a, a woman named Susan Roger who works at Duke, who specializes in pedagogical uh, tools for theoretical computer science. And she has a lot of good work that she's uh, 
done with her National Science Foundation projects. And you can download it and use the tools and play with the stuff instead of with your pen and pencil with a machine. Yeah, lots of different things. Call this A and B and call this 1, 0, 1, uh, A, well, let's call this, uh, hmm, I need another alphabet. Why not? Do you know Hebrew? I'll do Hebrew, but nobody knows Hebrew letters. Oh, you're good one. Okay, there we go. Here's the even number of zeros. Here's containing 101. Here's a final state. Here's a final state. Let's find the intersection of these two in a more direct way than that abstract proof I just gave you. Here's what we're going to do. And it's going to reinforce non-determinism one more time. Let's keep track of what both these machines are doing as you read symbols. When you start, where are these machines? In what pair of states? In A and X. Okay. Let's, let's forget about final states for now or how we're going to interpret this. Let's just use this to simulate these being run simultaneously. We start off in being in both A and X, and now in a zero, where do we go? B, X. And on a one? A, Y. A, Y, good. I'm going to do a little more of this before you get bored. How big might this get? Every, every new state in my new machine is going to have a pair of old states. So we have two states here and four states here. It's going to be eight at the most. It might be all of them. It's possible some might not show up. But we might have eight. You're probably bored. Who wants to go see eight? But let's just do a little bit more just to make sure everybody gets it, and then I'll show you how to finish it up. From Bx on a zero, where would you go? A, X. That's not bad. From BX on a 1, where do you go? From AY on a 0. BZ? AY on a 0, BZ? All right. Everybody see how to complete this? Sooner or later, you come back to states that are already there, and you finish your whole machine, you get a deterministic machine. How do we interpret this? You can interpret this to do union or intersection in a way different from the way we did union and intersection before. This keeps track of where both these machines are. If you want a string that's either in this one or in this one, then the final states in here should be any state that has either a final state from here or from here. So AX would be a final state for doing union, because you can end up in A. AY would be a final state, because you can end up in A. Anything with a W in it would be a final state. But if you wanted the intersection of the two, you have to look through these states and find, in this case, only a single state, the state labeled AW. So if we continued this, sooner or later, AW would show up. And that would be the only final state in the machine for the intersection. So this product, this is called the product of these two machines. It's done in a very similar way to non-deterministic uh, calculation of turning it into a deterministic machine. But in this case, you're only keeping track of simultaneous machines, two states, not a subset. So it doesn't grow quite as large. It's only the product of these two instead of exponential. And what's more, you can do either union or intersection depending on how you interpret the final states. So that's another way to do intersection. So the second option of doing it, the, the reason that we would do that is just to have a, another way to go at it? Or is there a the, the reason you would do this, because let's well, say you were writing a program to do it. Uh -huh. The other way wouldn't be your choice, because oh, okay. the other way explodes okay. exponentially. If you were building a program to do it, the way to do it is to take the product of these two and just have pairs of things in your states rather than subsets of things in your state. 
Because if you're just unioning or intersectioning two machines, that's a much more specific thing than taking a non-deterministic machine and converting it to a deterministic one. There you have to keep track 